a conversation that I've known we were going to have to have now for some time. But I really didn't want to have it. I, I, I wanted to be wrong. I wanted to find some comfort or confidence in the idea that the Israeli government is not embarked upon the de facto destruction of the entire Gaza Strip with little concern about how many people, well, no concern at all about how many people would be displaced during that process and little evident concern about how many people will die. It's extraordinary when you think about it that the death toll now is well past the 20,000 mark with just under half of those people being children. Half of those people being children and yet we are not giving, giving it, we have not given it a fraction of the coverage that we did to the carnage in Ukraine or, 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 or the carnage in Syria. And when I say we, I mean the British media, which at one extreme today on the front page of the Daily Telegraph, quite extraordinarily, they consider it to be more newsworthy that the former prime minister, the disgraced former prime minister, Boris Johnson, has complained about the Metropolitan Police uh, inviting people passing through this country with, with any alleged evidence or evidence of alleged war crimes in Gaza to talk to them. Remember, there are British citizens caught up in the catastrophe in Gaza. We, we spoke to one of them yesterday, a dual, dual citizenship scientist um, up in Manchester. And yet Boris Johnson and the Daily Telegraph combined to complain about an investigation into alleged war crimes that would involve uh, presumably a dozen <laughs> officers uh, while well, well, 20, over 20,000 human beings are dead, nearly half of them children. So there's an, in, an, an almost unbelievable imbalance there, an almost unbelievable imbalance. And the reluctance to talk about it comes from the bleakness of the conclusion to which one is led. That conclusion there that the... Um, that the policy, the intent is to destroy the entire territory and quite possibly render it uninhabitable for generations to come. Two things have happened in the last 24 hours that make it, I think, impossible to avoid that conclusion. Uh, the first is a warning from Western leaders against explicit Israeli plans to resettle hundreds of thousands of Gazans in the Democratic Republic of Congo. So one report has suggested that there have been secret talks to send displaced people there. Some Israeli officials, including far right, and that phrase isn't even controversial, members of government, far right ministers have been publicly advocating for the resettlement of Gazans. I don't know what definition of ethnic cleansing you work under or, 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 or the relevant institutions here work under, but if you, if you take an entire people from there. Uh, from their homes and relocate them to uh, a far-off land, a far-off territory, then that's pretty close, I would have thought, to most people's um, uh, 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 definition of, of ethnic cleansing. The West has expressed concern about these uh, supposed plans. The rhetoric, they say, is inflammatory and irresponsible. The African nation is, is 2,500 miles from... Uh, from Gaza, and the way that the story has been picked up uh, on the Times of Israel's Hebrew site, which is called Zman uh, Yisrael, uh, suggests that senior sources um, uh, believe that the talks have unfolded. They call it the voluntary migration of Gazans to other countries. But how voluntary would it be if the alternative is a hellscape? A hellscape. Um, eight minutes after ten is the time. The second thing that happened happened on LBC last night, and, and I don't know if you heard it. It was, it was heartbreaking, actually, because anyone who has feared from, I think it was about a week to ten days, wasn't it, into the assault, the, the, the first week, the, uh, the case for Israel's necessity, let alone right, to respond robustly, whatever that means, to the terror attack of October the 7th was, was watertight. Nobody could argue they must, you know, turn the other cheek, as, uh, as, as, as the New Testament would teach. Nobody could argue that. And, and yet after about a week to 10 days, the sense that something truly horrific had been unleashed was becoming, I think, unavoidable. 
but you could still argue the toss. You, you, you could still cling to the hope that there would be some sort of proportionality attached. The idea that they wanted or that the, the, the plan was to raise the entire territory to the ground, regardless of the consequences in terms of displacements and death, was too horrible to contemplate. So we sort of tied ourselves in semantic knots for a while, uh, condemning it but not calling for a ceasefire in the case of both governments and the Labour Party, although America and the United Kingdom ended up in a tiny international minority on, on that front. Uh, again, evidence perhaps that we are being shown this uh, bombardment, we're being shown this uh, catastrophic uh, uh, undertaking through a very distorted lens in the United Kingdom and, 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 and the United States because the, the argument, I think, has become absolutely uncontestable that the Israeli government wants to raise Gaza to the ground. And I say that because I think that the ambassador to the United Kingdom, the Israeli ambassador to the United Kingdom, essentially told Ian Dale, my colleague Ian Dale, that last night. I don't know if you caught this program. But she, um, it's Zippy Hotovelli, speaking to Ian Dale last night, as far as I can tell, and I don't know if I'm using the wrong dictionary, she kind of said it out loud. One of the things we realised that every school, every mosque, every second house has an access to tunnel. So this is, and, and of course, a munition. But that's an argument for so, destroying the whole of Gaza, every single building in it. So do you have another solution how to destroy the underground tunnel city, that this is the place where the terrorists hide, where they have all their ammunition, and this is the rockets that are still fired on Israeli cities. You know how Israel started its new year? We didn't have fireworks. We had rockets instead of fireworks. And I, I think you have to point out, to, to the best of my knowledge, very few or no casualties as a consequence of those attacks. While well, the death toll of Palestinian people in the Gaza Strip smashed through the 20,000 barrier. I, I'm going to play that to you again because I think that is the Israeli ambassador to the United Kingdom essentially saying we are... And there's no evidence that every second house, every school, every hospital has access to tunnels. But even if it did... Could you imagine the British government going into, into, into Belfast, the British army going into Belfast and blowing up every house on the grounds that the neighbours might have been uh, Republican terrorists or that there might have been IRA men hiding in the cellar? So they're going to blow up every house, every hospital, every school, destroy the entire Catholic neighbourhoods of Northern Ireland because of terror attacks on, on the UK mainland or, or, or in, in Ireland? No, of course you couldn't. So listen to this again, and, uh, and then we'll talk about what we think we've heard. Every school, every mosque, every second house has an access to tunnel. So this is, and, and of course, ammunition. But that's an argument for so, destroying the whole of Gaza, every single building in it. So do you have another solution how to destroy the underground tunnel city, that this is the place where the terrorists hide, where they have all their ammunition, and this is the rockets that are still fired on Israeli cities? You know how Israel started its new year? We didn't have fireworks. We had rockets instead of fireworks. So... I'm pretty sure the argument until quite recently was that the bombardment was necessary in order to rescue the hostages and to destroy Hamas. But of course, anywhere a terrorist could be hiding, a hostage could be held. So not only is she essentially explicitly stating the uh, ambition to destroy the entire territory, to render the entire territory uninhabitable, she is perhaps accidentally completely abandoning any pretense that anybody cares a jot about rescuing hostages. And this is the point, I think, at which the, um, <sighs> at which the debate, if, if it is a debate, is almost over. Unless you want to have a conversation about whether or not you support the ethnic cleansing of the Palestinian people. I can't see that there's any other question to be asked anymore. And, and I stress again, this is a conversation about Israeli government policy. It doesn't matter what religion people are or, or, or what, what, what geographical origins they have. This is about Israeli government policy. And it seems to me now, thanks to the ambassador, the government appointed ambassador to the United Kingdom, um, the, 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 the stated aim now is to raise the entire territory to the ground. 
And from where I'm sitting, I don't think anyone's going to be able to stop them. And that's extraordinary, really, when you think about it. I don't think anybody is going to be able to stop them. Do you? 0345 6060 973. And of course, if it's not ethnic cleansing, then give me a call and tell me what it is. Reports that there are plans to move thousands of people thousands of miles to the Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, calling it voluntary, despite the fact that the alternative would be presumably to live in a hole or to live in a tent. And we have a former British Prime Minister complaining about the Metropolitan Police dedicating a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction of resources to the question of whether or not war crimes have already been committed. And we have both major parties, the leader of the Labour Party and the leader of the Conservative Party, both continuing to fall short of calling for a ceasefire. So I, I have I articulated a lot and often and carefully in the past my deep understanding of the existential threat under which Jewish people live all around the world, not just in Israel. And I make no apology for reminding you of that and for returning to that territory. Whenever we address this issue, it is, in my opinion, a historically unique condition to have been target of Holocaust within shared memory. The generational trauma that that delivers is absolutely inconceivable if you have not lived through it. But it cannot justify what is now happening in Gaza. It simply cannot. And that, I think, is why the words from the ambassador, Zippy Hotovelli, were so chilling on Ian Dale's program last night. Because the, the people who are actually prepared to say out loud what everybody now knows is happening sound absolutely horrendous. What else can we do? but blow up the entire territory, render the entire land uninhabitable. I wonder whether I can ask the question of whether or not you support this, Be but I'm not sure I can, because I'm not sure I could bear to talk to you. The, 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 the absolute destruction of an entire territory, the displacement of millions of people, the killing of thousands, the death toll of children alone, should be enough to focus the mind of, of any person. And yet here we are. Here we are listening to the ambassador, the Israeli ambassador in London, justifying what has to be ethnic cleansing, doesn't it? What else could we call it? Well, I'll play it to you one more time and then I'll open up the phone lines. Every school, every mosque, every second house has and access to tunnel. So this is, and, and of course, ammunition. But that's an argument for so, destroying the whole of Gaza, every single building in it. So do you have another solution how to destroy the underground tunnel city, that this is the place where the terrorists hide, where they have all their ammunition, and this is the rockets that are still fired on Israeli cities. You know how Israel started its new year? We didn't have fireworks. We had rockets instead of fireworks. We, we, you know, we're listening to a woman justify the destruction of every school every hospital, every home, every building in the Gaza Strip. And people who were cautiously supportive of Israel's retaliation, Israel's response to the October 7th the terror attack, clung desperately to the notion that it would be proportionate, that it would be designed to rescue hostages, and that it would be carefully calibrated to focus upon Hamas members, that there wouldn't be, if you like, collective punishment or un. Uh, justifiable civilian casualties. 